Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago I went to the jungle and got ill. Very <laughs> ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a f*** about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. I am fully charged up with my second black coffee of the morning, and I'm ready to go for this Hacks episode. Um, It's another Hacks episode, kind of the things that I've been trying out in my life, uh, the things that I've been writing about in the Zestology newsletter, um, little hacks and tweaks and biohacks and tricks that you might want to apply to your own life, some supplements, some lifestyle tweaks in there as well, all in the pursuit of more energy, vitality and motivation, because this podcast is all about energy. So thank you for listening and I hope it helps. Coming up, we'll be talking uh, supplements, two supplements on the way in a few moments time a sleep tweak, an app, uh, another supplement, um, a gadget. Uh, uh, well, what gadget? I suppose it's kind of gadget. It's such a kind of 80s word, isn't it? A um, bit of technology that you might want to apply uh, to your own life. Another supplement, an article that I read, um, something you can use for cooking, a documentary, a book, uh, another lifestyle hack, and a form of workout as well. So I hope that's kind of whetted your appetite a little bit. Um, Let's start then with a supplement, in fact two supplements, lithium orotate and vitamin B12. And I talked about these on my podcast and I've actually been taking both and trying them out recently. And I know a lot of people listening to this podcast may well take B12 already, but I wonder if you take lithium orotate. Um, I I shared an article on the site geneticlifehacks.com about Uh, why many of us might need to use more of the mineral lithium. And some people might need to use more of the mineral lithium than others. And I think it's worth me probably just re-establishing at the start of this podcast, I'm not a doctor, and you should probably speak to your practitioner about starting any new regime, whether it be diet or supplement-based. But there's a doctor called Dr. Amy Yasko, who is very well respected in this area, and she recommends checking lithium levels for a lot of people And she says it not only plays a role in mood, glutamate control and limiting aggression, but has also been shown to be involved in B12 transport, i.e. when you take B12 as well, it'll help you to assimilate and absorb that as well. Why is B12, why is vitamin B12 important to your mood? Well, it's involved in the production of the neurotransmitters serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, noroepinephrine, probably didn't say that right. And epinephrine, probably didn't say that right either. So yeah, I've been supplementing with these two over the last month or two. To be honest, lithium orotate, I haven't noticed any difference. But it may well be that it is helping with the transport of the vitamin B12. And the methylation vitamins that I've just kind of gently upped, over the, and this is something where I really would recommend working with a practitioner, because when I first started methylating, I felt so great so quickly that I took the max dose of methylated B vitamins and I felt brilliant for about two weeks. Then I had this massive detox crash for about a month, which shows how much I needed it, but didn't feel great at the time. Um, So I've been gently upping my methylation recently and my goodness, I have been feeling so good. Um, And I think the main difference is a bit more energy during the day, but just sleeping so well at night and much less inflamed. So it's something that I've been working on for a long time. I do. I am a sensitive methylator, sensitive in many different areas of my life and especially methylation. And this is something that is really helping me. The lithium orotate, I haven't noticed any difference. It hasn't made me feel less aggressive. Maybe I I don't have that much aggression in the first place. I just haven't noticed that much difference with the lithium orotate. So um, the B12 and the methylated vitamins definitely, as I say, go very gently with them. Use a reputable brand like Thorn or Seeking Health 
And I'll always be a massive fan of working with a functional health practitioner on, on their methylation because um, I know from my personal cost that it can be a very sensitive area if you don't get it right. Going to give the lithium orotate a Zestology hacks rating of uh, well, three out of five because I haven't noticed much difference. But if it's helping the B12 get absorbed, then very good. And I give the B12 five out of five. Definitely helps me. And I've been feeling good on that. So uh, that's the hacks rating for those two. Let's move. Let me check my uh, checklist from lithium orotate and B12 to a sleep tweak that I've been talking about for the last few weeks. And this is a Scandinavian sleep idea where you have one bed, but two duvets. I know, amazing idea, isn't it? Um, apparently in Scandinavia, especially Denmark and Norway, and to a lesser extent, Sweden, I think, most couples or many couples sleep in one bed, but have two duvets. And this is apparently a brilliant thing to do because you know, when someone's like hogging the duvet and it wakes you up in the middle of the night or they get out of bed in the middle of the night to go to the loo or something and they pull the duvet when they get back in it and that wakes you up as well. There's a lot less wake ups with one bed and two duvets. This is a sleep tweak that I've been talking about. And what's amused me has been talking about it on my podcast and um, well, my newsletter really and now on my podcast as well. And I've had so much feedback. I mean, I'm just looking down the, the comments that I had on Instagram and uh, replies to my uh, email as well. Here's one comment from Norway. Um, Seriously, question mark, one duvet, we'd be divorced. A duvet each is the way to go. I never knew this was a Scandi thing, though. Just common sense. A two duvet greeting from Norway. So one bed, two duvets is the next hack here on Zestology. Um, I'm going to give it four out of five because I've not tried it yet. I need to find two appropriately sized duvets for our bed. But in the pursuit of better sleep, you know, anything goes. And um, I think um, it actually looks quite good. I've seen some pictures online. It looks good. Apparently, IKEA sell duvets especially for this purpose because they are a Scandinavian country as well. And uh, one bed, two duvets. Maybe it's the way to go. You never thought you'd be listening about to uh, such in-depth hacks on this podcast, did you? Uh, let me have a sip of my coffee. Um, I had The Social Dilemma, the um, Netflix documentary down to talk about. And I also have an app for moderating your online usage. And I think I might combine them and do them together. Uh, let's talk then about this app to energize you. I've been trialing the Moment app. It helps you understand how you use your phone through simple, easy to understand screen time tracking. And I think most people listening to this would probably admit that they use their phone too much. It is such a pervasive problem at the moment, isn't it? And if you've seen The Social Dilemma, you'll be only too aware of this. So Moment, the CEO of Moment is on that documentary, The Social uh, Dilemma. And um, the app helps you uh, track your screen time, has free daily coaching. And so far I've noticed an alarming amount of daily pickups. What I like about this app is you can compete against the other people in your life, which is fun. And their slogan I like as well, it's less phone, more life, which sounds quite good actually. The documentary is called The Social Dilemma. I mean, it is frankly terrifying. It starts off the first half of the documentary on Netflix. You've probably seen it already. First half is about our own phone usage and what it's doing to ourselves and our families. And then it kind of widens out into broadened society. And it, it looks at society in general and how society is coping with such an explosion of technology. Um, since then, I've kind of delved into a Tristan Harris rabbit hole because he talks so brilliantly on that podcast. And, you know, they, they kind of explore these themes around companies like Facebook being, in many cases, the principal news provider in many countries. And then um, apparently Facebook, for example, manages, quote, 80 elections a year in the different countries that it is involved in. How can it cope? How can it moderate all the comments in all these countries going through elections at all the same time? And how can it be in any way balanced? The social dilemma is brilliant. I did hear one word of criticism from somebody I respect who said perhaps they thought it wasn't the most balanced piece of journalism, which is, is probably a good point. But I think um, when you hear Tristan Harris 
say that he's been contacted by multiple heads of state who've been worried about this issue and thanking him for having put this documentary out in the world. When you hear that it's number one in India and Myanmar, and uh, I can't remember about Myanmar, but it has definitely been number one on Netflix in India. And you think, you know, so many people around the world are influenced by this pervasive screen time um, and find it so hard to escape the screens. I feel like it's putting a lot of good out in the world. And one of the reasons I downloaded this app was to, um, well, the, the CEO of Moment app is on the documentary and talks very well. And I found it very hard to moderate my screen time. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I, I think I'm an addictive person. In fact, I don't think, I know I have addictive tendencies. Um, and it is very, very hard to stop one's addictive tendencies coming out in the phone. Now the iPhone, which is what I've got, they preload some settings. So you can say, do you know what? I only want to use Instagram for 15 minutes a day. But after 15 minutes, it says, would you like more time or not? It doesn't just ban you. It doesn't just lock you out until tomorrow. It just asks you if you'd like to override that limit. And I often do. Because as the film makes very clear, when you are, um, up, when me and my kind of uh, prehistoric prefrontal cortex is up against you know, 6,000 of the best behavioral scientists and computer programmers that Silicon Valley has to offer. It's kind of an unfair fight and it's hard to fight against that. Uh, I think, I personally think that the iPhone should have much stricter regulations. If I want to lock myself out of Instagram after 15 minutes and not use it until tomorrow, they should make that easier. And they don't do that at the moment. And that kind of annoys me, but that's the best we've got at the moment. The film I'd give five out of five. I definitely give Social Dilemma five out of five hacks rating. The Moment app, I'm only going to give it three out of five, and I'll tell you why. It's just not changing my behavior that much. I'm competing against my other half, Faith, in a kind of a little kind of moment challenge, and also my friend James. And I must admit, there was one day that I saw that James hadn't had any screen time, and I'd had, I don't know, two hours or something, and I felt pretty guilty about that. And then I, I don't think that the app was working for him that day or he hadn't opened it or something. <laughs> so he'd probably have more than me anyway, or maybe not. But um, yeah, I mean, download it, see what you think. But I'm only giving it three out of five. The other reason is that when I've got when I'm using um, my phone for directions in my car, it won't let me listen to the radio. And that is because of the moment app. So it's obviously just a little bit of a glitch, which I'm sure they will iron out. But I haven't been that impressed by that. Right, on to the blue pill to energise you. I have been talking about this on the podcast quite a bit, so I won't delve into this uh, too deeply. If you want to hear more about methylene blue and transcriptions, which is this blue pill that you take and you put it in the corner of your mouth and it massively energises you and makes you loads more alert. I probably should have taken it before recording this podcast because it's quite fun as well. And, you know, as far as I can tell, it's fairly harmless. Um, and I did an interview with Dr. Ted Achacoso a little while back. And he is the man, he is the genius who invented this pill. Uh, so you can hear that whole podcast if you'd like. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it briefly because many biohackers are taking this pill. It turns your tongue blue. You may already know about transcriptions and methylene blue, but it is powerful stuff and it's it's quite fun as well. And I've been taking it a little bit recently, especially when I want to do a lot of writing in the morning. I want to focus on one thing and do a lot of writing. Um, I'll take a methylene blue and it is quite fun. As I say, check out transcriptions or check out the Zestology podcast with Ted Achacoso and it helps you focus, it helps with energy, it contains a number of strong performance enhancers including nicotine, caffeine and methylene blue. And in that podcast we talk about whether it's safe, what it can do for us and all the rest of it. Uh, transcriptions and blue carnitine is the name of it. And uh, yeah, if you just search for Blue Tongue Club Zestology, you'll, you'll find it on, on uh, Google. I'll give it four out of five. You know, I mean, I, as, as safe as I'm sure it is, it's, I don't want to be taking anything every day. And I don't find that when I take it, I'm, I'm all of a sudden the Usain Bolt of the writing and podcasting world. But I do feel nice on it and it is, um, it is quite enjoyable. You know, I find a good night's sleep and methylation and meditation even more helpful, but it is still good. So I'll give it four out of five. 
Okay, let me check. How are we doing for time here? Yeah, all right. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, thing on my list, which is sensate. Oh, I just med- I mentioned meditation there. You know, my meditation practice over this year has definitely improved and phew, I need it. Um, when you're not when you've got a baby and you don't always get enough sleep, you really need meditation. And one of the things that's been helping me with a different form of relaxation is Sensate. Um, Hands up who's tried Sensate. By the way, if you hear it, some kind of weird grumbling and rumbling outside of the window, um, it's because predictably, just as I started recording this podcast, some building work started outside and there's a massive kind of truck unloading stuff, bits of wood, brick, and cement, maybe even mixing cement. Thanks, guys. Just as I'm recording a Hacks episode. But anyway, hands up who has tried Sensate. We have one of these at home. It's a good way to switch off. Um, It's basically a large pebble that you put on your chest as you lie down and relax, and then it vibrates your whole body. I have talked about this before. I road tested it about a year ago on the podcast. And there is no other way to describe it apart from the fact it's a large pebble that vibrates your whole body. Yeah. Well, the benefits are that it manages your stress, improves your sleep and concentration, and kind of more than that, it just feels nice, really. There's an app that goes alongside it, and you have a program, and it plays some relaxing music, which sounds a little bit kind of cliched massage relaxation music. But it is nice. It's very nice. Um, And you get a lot of the beneficial results that you associate with meditation, and Sensate has also been shown to improve heart rate variability. So it's, it's a nice little, as I trailed at the start of the podcast, gadget or bit of health tech that you can put around you. I think it's about 300 quid, so it's not particularly cheap. But we do use it quite a bit, both of us, both me and Faith. And um, you can put it uh, around your neck and it, um, it just feels nice. You do 10 or 20 minute program. It's kind of like a very chill meditation. Sometimes if you want a little nap in the middle of the day, that'll send you off. So Sensei, really like Sensei. I give it four out of five and definitely use it quite a bit. And um, yeah, I, I, I encourage you to check it out. Okay, let's move uh, to my lunch today. I know that might sound a bit random, but um, after this, I'm going to be having my lunch. And I'm very excited to say that I've got butternut squash and onions roasting in the oven while I record this podcast and this podcast is proudly brought to you by my podcast partner and it's a great time to tell you about another hack as well mass zymes well mass zymes is the most complete most potent digestive enzyme there is there is 102 percent more protease than the nearest competitor and that is important because protein is the most complex macronutrient to break down over the weekend, we had a power cut here. We had, I had to go to the pub for lunch, and I'd already uh, booked to go to the pub for dinner as well. So I get to the pub, and there's nothing that kind of low histamine on the menu. I ended up having a steak and chips, and I ended up having a big slab of chicken in the evening. A lot of protein, probably more than I needed. And I really needed the mass zymes to help break it all down. So I'm all about optimizing the gut. This is seriously exciting. And um, if you want to get involved with mass zymes the zestology team has been able to arrange the lowest pricing you will find a deal that you will not even find on amazon if you go to bioptimizers.co.uk or bioptimizers.com and use the code zestology10 and you know when i go down and have my lunch today and when i had that steak uh, at the weekend i really needed the mass zymes because it just helps you break things down and that's what you might be getting Uh, when you get mass zymes as well. But remember, use the code ZESTOLOGY10. And before I finish this particular segment and telling you about my podcast partner, um, I think one of the best things about this deal is that if you don't feel how mass zymes transforms your digestion, you can get a no questions asked money back return on your order. So head to masszymes.co.uk or masszymes.com and use the code ZESTOLOGY10. Now, how is your qua routine my next hack is to simply read an article online i've got quite into mark manson and his writing recently and um, as lockdown starts to kind of get enforced again a little bit more here in the uk i just think there's a few things that are quite important for surviving this all it is very difficult that's my phone sorry about that um it's very difficult to um 
I don't know, sometimes just feel... To, uh, look, there's no way of dressing it up. It's sometimes difficult to feel chirpy when for the next six months you're staring at a long, hard winter, only able to see five other people at a time, not able to meet up with family and friends who are shielding, and not able to go on holidays, not able to have kind of all the fun that you can normally have, and worrying about this mental health and physical pandemic that's going on, as well as many people worrying about money and jobs as well. Mark Manson has written an excellent article about surviving the mental health crisis around coronavirus. And the if you if you search for Mark Manson and Qua Routine, you'll find this article. And the first point of the article, I think, is brilliant. And he says, from today until this is over, you have a new God and his name is routine. <laughs> uh, and he just makes the point that when you've got a set routine, when you wake up at a certain time, you do your work at a certain time, you exercise at a certain time every day, you have social time and family time and you eat in the evening at a certain time and you read your book before bed and you turn out the light at a certain time, that's how you get through it. That's how you deal with social isolation. I mean, he says, routine is king. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's a very, he, he talks about these quarantine routines or qua routines and he says, focus on the basics, wake up time, work hours or productivity hours, time for health and self-care and bedtime. And that health and self-care time is so important as well. So look, this article, if you search for Mark Manson and qua routine, I like that word, I wish I'd thought of that myself, um, then you'll find it. I definitely give it a hacks rating of five out of five. It's an excellent article. From there, I want to move to a cooking ingredient to energise you. I've been making dressings and sauces with a very oddly named ingredient. It's called verju. <laughs> I know, it's spelt uh, verjuice. V-E-R-J-U-S, verju. It's a German brand. It's a sort of vinegar made from the juice of unripe grapes. And it can also be spelled the juice. Yeah, weird name, great ingredient. It's made with unripe grapes, even wild ones, and they pick them the moment they start to change colour, which means they are histamine-free. The jus is histamine-free, which is very exciting for me, uh, living on a low histamine diet and eating low histamine. And it's kind of like, you know, if you're making a salad dressing, when I go down and have my butternut squash and, uh, uh, and onions after recording this podcast, and I descend from the spare room down to the kitchen, I may well use a little bit of verju in my salad. Pair it up with olive oil and it tastes very nice. Give it four out of five, because uh, I've only just started using it, but I like it a lot. Um, yeah, test out verju. And if you want to... Um, check them out on Instagram. I think it's Vajou Shop International. Uh, definitely, I'm following them on my Instagram anyway, so you might want to want to check them out. And that they, it's, a good, it's a good little ingredient. Right, we've covered the social dilemma. Um, before I finish, I wanted to look at a book that I've been talking quite a bit about on the newsletter, Dr. Walter Longo's book, Studying Longevity. The Longevity Diet. Um, He talks quite a bit about the need for lots of veggies, moderate amounts of fat, not that many carbs, and not that much protein. He's not a massive fan of animal protein. Um, Dr. Dale Bredesen, who uh, wrote The End of Alzheimer's Program, former Zestology guest, and a brilliant man as well, says moderate animal protein as well. Um, He also invented the fasting mimicking diet, Dr. Volta Lungo, which Faith has recently done. I haven't done it yet. I'll tell you why. Because whilst I'd love to do it and I would love to get all the benefits of autophagy that I could get from basically uh, my body thinking that I'm fasting for five days but eating a certain amount of calories every day. I'm thin enough as it is. I think I just I would just lose too much weight. I'd struggle to put on weight. And I know that's annoying for a lot of people, but that's the way it is. But anyway, the reason for telling you about Dr. Lungo and his diet is that one of the things he says in the book, and I enjoyed this book very much, he's a scientist and a researcher, and he has gone to all these blue zones around the world and, and looked at some of the areas where people can... Uh, make big improvements in their quest for longevity. The blue zones, where there's an abnormal amount of centenarians living long, healthy, happy lives. And he says exercise for energy, in his book, is so important. He emphasises the need, this is the bit that I like, 
for plenty of moderate exercise. He says, as well as doing kind of a little bit more cardio stuff, you want to be doing at least an hour of fast walking a day. And supposedly the centenarians living in many blue zones around the world have always had a great deal of low level exercise built into their daily lives. I've been trying to do this so much and uh, very much enjoying the morning walk to nursery with our son. And then today I was just so looking forward to it, strapped on my trainers, 40 minutes. And you're going to say I'm a wuss, but it started pouring with rain. And um, the prospect of a wet son, wet partner and wet me uh, getting soaked through. We did it in the car. I know. I mean, first time in about first time since I've read this book that we've dropped him off by car rather than walking there. So I'm not happy about that. But um, supposedly these centenarians living in these blue zones have always had a great deal of low level exercise built into their daily lives. And when it rains, they take the car. I made up that last bit. Um, They walk a few miles a day to work. They walk to the local town. They stay on the move regularly. And that is the key thing. Staying on the move regularly is better than sitting for hours and then a short gym burst. You know, you might think you're being healthy by sitting at a desk all day and then going to the gym. And actually, Volta Lungo says, you know what, you're better just walking around all day. That's a problem when you are a desk hound, isn't it? And especially when you're working from home as well. Um, That is the admittedly slightly self-interested reason that I normally record the podcast intros walking around London. Um, But uh, one of the things that helps if if you've got an Oura ring and you don't have it in airplane mode, they will send you updates if you haven't been moving around too much. And they'll send you reminders to, oh, you might want to get up and stretch your legs for a little bit. Um, But exercising for energy and Dr. Lungo's longevity diet, I give that four out of five hacks rating. Another thing he talks about is uh, modifying your work environment for energy. Um, and actually, he does, I mean, he talks a little bit about kind of moving around. And this is something that I've just been thinking about a lot. You know, if you are working from home, if you do have a job that means you have to be in front of a computer, could you incorporate a standing desk into your working environment? That's something that we've, we've invested in here. Um, because it's so intense. I mean, we're living in an experiment, a working from home experiment. A lot of people now forced to work from home. A lot of people like me still going into into um, into the office or the studio as well at Sky. But um, a lot of people working from home, and it's intense, isn't it? Just looking at a screen all day. So, could you incorporate a standing desk into your working environment? We have one here. It is fantastic and I, the, when I write my newsletter sometimes I'll, I'll just remember to press the button and it'll it'll go up and I'll stand up for a bit and then I'll be like do you know what? I've been standing up for now I'm going to sit down you forget for a while they're not cheap but I highly recommend it a standing desk um, I give the standing desk a five out of five I give the moderate exercise for energy five out of five the Ura ring I love five out of five but I don't want to rely on the reminders throughout the day if you've been sedentary for more than a certain amount of time from the Ura because that means keeping it out of uh, airplane mode and the problem is I keep it in airplane mode to prevent extra EMFs so I don't get the reminders so you know, I think that's I, I think it's, uh, the Ura Ring is effective for a lot of things but not for that right I've got one more hack to tell you about And uh, that is that I've just completed my second Qigong course this year. Um, It was Qigong Animal Play. And I did the first course was like a week long course. It was on Zoom. I did it a few months ago. I think I spoke about it in the newsletter, maybe not on the podcast, but on the newsletter. And yeah, I do look completely ridiculous when doing Qigong, but I love it so much. You know, it's activating the energy meridian lines around the body. It's activating the breath. It's physical exercise. It's very mindful and meditative as well. It's everything that this podcast loves, especially pretending to be an animal in your spare room in the middle of a working day. I was surprised after this course how much I ached. It is a good workout. Um, And uh, do you know what? I'm absolutely obsessed with the Qigong. I really love it. I feel good. It fits Dr. Lungo's bill of moderate exercise. And I can I can foresee a time where I might even do the whole kind of 220 hours teacher training in Qigong. Not because I want to be a teacher in it, just because I love it. Um, and uh, that Qigong animal play 
is uh, it was an excellent week and it was a nice healthy counterbalance to a ridiculously late shift at Sky that I had to do on Saturday night testing out new studios. I eventually clambered into bed at 3am so it's been nice to do a little bit of Qigong animal play as well. Look, you, you might want to check it out. The Qigong, I've done the two courses this year, the animal play course and the 12 rivers course and you do it on Zoom and the teacher is a guy called Aaron Collins Thomas who I've had on my podcast, that's where I spoke about it and uh, it's just fun. Just fun, good exercise, rooted in thousands of years of history, science, breath work, energy, and everything that we love on this podcast. Um, if you go to Hey You Fit, you can find out more about that Qigong animal play. Um, it is that spelt H A, then the word U Y O U, H A Y O U Fit dot com. And remember to tell them that you heard about it here. I don't have a discount code for you on that one. I should ask them for one. But um, they might actually be going on tour to launch the uh, website officially because I think that website's quite new and they might be coming here to say hello and record a podcast. So um, Aaron Collins Thomas and Katie Brindle are the two people behind the website and it's a definite five out of five hacks rating for me. So that is pretty much it for this episode of Zestology. Thank you for listening as always. We've gone through the lithium orotate and the B12, the one bed, two duvets idea, moment app and the social dilemma documentary, methylene blue and uh, transcriptions, um, the sensate and meditation in general and mass zymes. I'll be taking some, popping some of them with my lunch in a few minutes' time. Um, how's your qua routine looking? The Vajou. That's the best named hack on this podcast, isn't it? Love a bit of Vajou. Uh, Volta Lungo's longevity diet, uh, fast walking, moderate exercise, modifying your work environment for energy, and Qigong animal play. Thank you so much for listening to Zestology. Thank you to my podcast partners, Masszymes. I'll be having Masszymes with my lunch today. And if you want to get involved in Masszymes, you can head to bioptimizers, with a z.co.uk or bioptimizers.com and use the code Zestology10. The happy thing is that you can also use that same code for anything else on the site. But for the Masszymes, you get special, depending on how many bottles you get of Masszymes, you can get up to 48% off. So it's a brilliant deal. If you're not happy, you'll get your money back as well. Um, so head to bioptimizers.co.uk or bioptimizers.com if you're anywhere else in the world apart from the UK and check out their product, Mass Zymes, a brilliant enzymes product that you can take with food. Great. Thanks for listening. I'll do another hack soon. I've, I've got a few more that I haven't had a chance to speak about, but I'll do another one of these soon. Um, as always, any questions or thoughts, let me know through the website, tonywriting.com. A lot of this stuff I've talked about on the newsletter, so at that place you can sign up for the newsletter at the same time at tonywriting.com. I send these out every week. And thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.